I met Roy in Crossville, Tennessee when Julie and I moved there to become the associate pastor at a church called Trinity Tabernacle. Roy was a volunteer at the time. He was working in the children's department. Kind of got to know him, but uh, you know, I kind of became his boss. And uh, it wasn't long that we started, you know, having to be together and hang out and do some things. And um, found out that, man, Roy and I weren't anything alike. Uh, I loved being outdoors. He loved being indoors. Uh, I liked hiking and doing stuff, and Roy liked sitting and doing nothing. It was just we, we found ourselves at completely different kind of characteristics of, of each other. But man, what a friendship that we started to develop! And I was just so fascinated with Roy. Uh, when I began to learn his story and I began to learn more about him, it was just amazing to me. Uh, he grew up on the carnival. He traveled with his father and his family. They lived in RVs and everything that you imagine about the carnival, that was Roy's world. His dad was an artist. He would draw those big banners and he would paint people's trucks and, and do lettering for all of the Midway things and the Midway Fair. And it was amazing to me to hear him talk about it. Roy and I ended up uh, serving in ministry together at the church. There was something we did called, the, we called it the fair outreach. And we had this big blue bus and we took it to the fair there. We would park it and we would do puppets out of it and do ministry out of it. And so Roy and I would walk the midway together and he would point out all the things that were happening. He would point out the guy trying to to lure you in to, to play his game and knowing that if you spend two dollars and you'll win a 50 cent prize and how that works and he would point to a ride over here and say this is the tilt-a-whirl and I used to build this ride my dad owned it and we get through putting it together and then there'd be five or six extra bolts left over and we just put them in a box and wait till the next carnival and hope we get it right his stories were amazing I was just fascinated by it and it wasn't long that I started learning that his his skills and his crafts were were all in artistry and creativity and in puppets and in magic and in illusion and sleight of hand. Uh, the story, one of my favorite stories that he tells is about a sister named Tasha. Tasha was uh, part of their act and they had this big tent and, and it was Tasha the snake child and she's from the Okeechobee uh, jungle or Okeechobee swamp and there she uh, lived with the snakes and was raised by them and whatever and so you would Roy would stand outside and bark you in and tell you hey come see Tasha the snake child and you would come in and see her and pay your quarter and there you'd find her in this glass container with all these snakes crawling all over her and they were poisonous snakes uh, but they really weren't because Roy and his father had painted those snakes to look as if they were like copperheads and king cobras and things like that and it was just just crazy stuff. So this skinny young boy that Julie and I met kind of came into our life when we were kind of beginning a new adventure. See, Roy likes to say this about the carnival. Most people run away to join the carnival, but Roy left the carnival to find a family. And Julie and I like to think we were part of that family for him. Hey, Pastor Roy, congratulations from the whole Miko family. We love you so much. You mean the absolute world to my family. And I just wanted to get on here and just let you know what an impact you've made on the kingdom of God. Um, you truly just brought so much energy and passion and just created this unique an exciting environment to learn about Jesus and I'll always remember that and I just want to thank you for just all the magic tricks all the puppetry all the the games and the candy and all the things that you did just to get kids excited to learn about Jesus and so again just want to thank you so much honor you we love you we appreciate you and um, just we're so excited for this next season of life for you and Miss Carrie. And we wish you all the best um, praying for you guys. Again, love you so much. What can I tell you about my buddy Roy Stone, my dear friend? I can tell you that for a time we were on staff at the church as a children's pastor who didn't have children and a college pastor who didn't go to college. And that was pretty fun. Those were great times. Roy was my favorite at the table because he had a dark sense of humor like me. And uh, he was mean in all the best ways. 
and it was super fun hanging out and sharing stories. And I still think about those times. I remember one time my wife lost her job and we were trying to figure out what we were going to do and trying to cut corners. And I didn't, I was going to skip the staff lunch after staff meeting. And we said, come on, I got you. And I was like, no, it's fine. It's fine. And he goes, no, 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 it's cool, man. My wife's got a job. And I laughed harder than I've ever laughed when he said that. It was such a funny, mean thing to say. Uh, Roy is the best. He helped move me from East Tennessee to Middle Tennessee. They helped move me into my house, even though I was just joining the staff at that point as like a custodian of the church. And I remember he put a hole in my wall with the corner of my couch, put a big dent in the drywall, and uh, he never reimbursed me. I don't even know if he ever said I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm pretty mad still about it. No, I let it go. I will say this, uh, Roy, uh, it's a new journey for you and it's exciting. It's all about perspective, how you look at things. You told me a story about your dad picking up a hitchhiker years ago when you guys were doing the carnival thing. And you said the hitchhiker had one shoe and your dad didn't say anything about it. Guy gets in the back, just let it go. But he got down the road, he had to say something. Finally, he goes, I gotta ask you, buddy, did you lose your shoe? <laughs> and the guy says, nope, found one. And so I pray that you continue that uh, positive perspective as you head into the great unknown. And uh, we love you so much, pal. See you soon. Roy Stone, like where do I even begin? How do you sum up a 20 year friendship with a guy that you've served alongside in ministry the entire time? I mean, can you ever really do that? If my friend Roy Stone were doing this video, he would say not necessarily <laughs> because Puns and wordplay are like Roy's canvases. And Roy also really hates being honored and recognized, but he does really love puns. And so it seems like today it's appropriate that he gets a little bit of both. Like, have you ever had one of those friends uh, that you share so many inside jokes with that it's just annoying for everyone else around you because you basically speak a whole different language? That's me and Roy. Uh, we've been annoying people together for 20 years and counting. To this day, anytime the word asphalt comes up in a conversation, I just look at him and wait for it as he mouths the words, whose fault? <laughs> it's great to have a friend who stays just as immature as you do throughout all of your adulthood together. Julie and I went off to do multimedia work and Roy went to uh, do evangelism, serving in churches and doing crusades. But he always told me that if you ever planted a church, I'd love to come be a part of it. I'd love to be there and be a part of the children's ministry if you ever desire to do it and you would have me. And so on that very first Sunday when the church at Pleasant Grove started, Roy was there. We didn't pay him. We didn't have any money. He was driving from Crossville. Uh, he'd drive down every week and he would come and he would have the very first day he had chalk art and he had all the things that he does and all that creativity was that very first Sunday. The main sanctuary probably was nothing like that, but he had it going on. And that's when we started the journey at the church at Pleasant Grove. Roy is the only staff member besides Andrew and Julie uh, who has been at the church at Pleasant Grove longer than I have. When I got hired in 2004, Andrew told me that the staff might help out a little bit with the construction of our building here. So when I arrived though, I began doing construction every day and I didn't stop doing construction for two years. It was hard, but it was also kind of fun and therapeutic because nothing bonds people together better than hardship and hard work. And so from the get-go, my daily partner in crime on the construction site was the children's pastor, Roy Stone. We did everything together. We dug more holes and filled them back in and redug them than you can ever fathom. And we were waiting one time for four months for windows to be put in. And Roy and I would get up on a lift outside the church every week with these hammer staplers and reattach this Tyvek coating or this Tyvek fabric around the building and then the wind would keep knocking it out as it blew through the windows. I kid you not, we probably reattached, Roy, that Tyvek more than 50 times and we complained the whole time, mostly we laughed about it. I'll never forget my first day on the job site. Uh, all the guys organized a little ceremony and they presented me uh, with a hard hat that had the letters F2 taped to the front. Uh, and Roy let me know real fast that that stood for flunky too. And the only other guy who was more of a flunky than me was F1, that's Roy Stone. <laughs> Roy knew more stuff and more things. Uh, well, say it like this, Roy knew more stuff about more things than anyone I ever met. 
Having grown up in the carnival, his whole life was filled with all these rich and sometimes difficult experiences. But man, it was really cool having a guy who was willing to pick up snakes with his bare hands when they roamed onto the construction site or even into the church, while the rest of us just went running. But the guy whose sister was once the snake girl in the carnival, it was just another regular day at the office. It was also nice to have a friend who knew how to pickpocket or how to hotwire a car, you know, normal pastoral skills. Uh, there are just too many stories to tell about Roy, but a few do stand out. I can remember Roy and I being assigned to a huge wet saw to cut these enormous blocks that we were using to build the big retaining walls that are on each side of the building. Uh, one of our supervisors at the time was an older guy named Tommy Trumbo, and he put us on that wet saw. And if you know Roy, and you know that it, taking your time and being careful, those are not necessarily his strongest suits. He just likes to just, he just gets things done, you know? So he began pulling that blade down onto those blocks and man, we just, we started just seeing sparks fly everywhere. And that's when Tommy yelled at us, it's a chop saw, not a chop ax. And of course we were making a lot of noise at the time. And so Tommy's words got pretty jumbled. And when you say chop ax in the middle of a construction zone, it can sound like something else. And so Roy turned to me and said, what did he just call us? And to this day, uh, we say it's not a chop ax all the time. <laughs> I also remember the time that Andrew needed something jackhammered. So who did he pick to do the job? Two guys who had never worked a jackhammer. It's amazing that we survived, but it's not as amazing as the time that we had this high powered concrete nail gun, like it had this powder charge. And we were talking about how to best use it when Roy, in the middle of a conversation, just pointed at the ground near all of our feet and pulled the trigger. There was this huge boom, shrapnel went everywhere, and it made a crater in the middle of the floor. And uh, we were just really glad, honestly, that Roy didn't shoot his toe off that day. Hey, Pastor Roy, congratulations on retiring after 20 years of children's ministry at The Grove. I remember my first Sunday, I think I was nine years old. And I could not wait to tell my parents how incredible of a time I had and how excited I was to come back the next week. I don't know if that Sunday you shot electricity through a pickle and made it glow, or you used some science experiment to show how we are washed clean of our sins. No matter what you did, you made the gospel exciting, inclusive, and accessible to any child who walks through the door. I am so grateful I got to be one of them and that your time in children's ministry has been so foundational and been used to further the kingdom of God. And I am so thankful for you, and I hope you have an incredible retirement. Roy, it's your big day, man. Um, I don't know many people who have been able to grow up around the same people in their lives since, like, day one, like you have been. And um, for me and Seth, you know, growing up in your children's church ministry in Crossville, and then eventually landing in your children's ministry again in Mount Juliet, watching you do Woody the Puppet and chalk art and learning to be a clown, just a bunch of silly things that I'll take with me forever that have come from you. And, uh, you know, I'm going to cherish that for the rest of my life. I'm happy for you. I'm thankful for you. I'm going to miss you at the staff table, cutting up with you. I'm going to miss your wit, your puns. It's not going to be the same without you, but I'm happy for you. And I uh, can't wait to see what cool things you do from here. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon. So Roy showed up with his bag of tricks, and off we went to launch what would now ultimately be 20 years of serving together. Roy's conversion story was so unique in that he brought all those things from the carnival into the church world. He had used them to get people to spend money and buy things, but now he was using them to get children to understand the gospel message of Jesus Christ because it had so impacted him. He would bring magic and he would bring illusions and he would bring the artistry of, of painting and drawing and, and puppeteering and just you name it, it was always there. These walls that you see around me, the, the creativity of of the clubhouse feel that exists today in the church at Pleasant Grove was all conceptualized and delivered to us by Roy. Every one of these were hand airbrushed. This isn't some wallpaper. In fact, it's not the first time he did it, it's the second time. When we first started the building, when we built the building the first time, and he was a huge part of the building and the creativity of that world, he centered it around this whole idea called the lifesaver theme, where 
everything was like a candy factory and it was it was just bright and it just you wanted to be a part of it and he would he would just bring these most amazing things to the kids in that space and they would they would hang a string and kids would try to have to lick the lifesaver and that ultimately turned into a hanging rope with a donut in later years and and whether he was pulling a rabbit out of the hat or whether he was doing all of these things that he had at his arsenal were now being used to hopefully impact the lives of children and teach them about the life of Christ. And this was, this was our desire. This is what we wanted to do together. And we had the chance to, to bring it into one roof. And it was amazing and it was so wonderful. There were times in the early years that I would wonder if I was, if I was doing what I needed to do. And one night I was, we had just started the church and we were building the building and we weren't quite, um, we, we weren't in the building at this time. And so we had this big white tent set up out front and under that tent, Roy was doing a children's event. He was doing some children's ministry and John was on the other side of the pond with the young adults and they were all tucked away down in the corner with the, with the youth. And, and so I came out that evening to watch everything unfold and under the big top appropriately where Roy should be, he was doing all of the things that he does and the circus uh, environment was just energetic. People were all around and he was sharing Christ. And I looked over and I saw that John was down in the woods doing, well, he wasn't in the woods, but he was down doing stuff with the kids around the fire. And I, nobody knew who I was. I was just standing in the middle of the field under the stars, realizing that I'm getting the chance to live life with others who want to do things for Christ. And Roy was one of those. And to this day, I cherish that moment of watching Roy live out life under the big top a little different than he had done in his previous life. All those things aside, Roy is the most creative and talented person I've ever met. From the beginning, uh, he was never prone to use a certain curriculum or a VBS from someone else's program. He created everything from scratch. And if he didn't know how to do it, uh, that was no problem. He just taught himself how to do it. He made more magic tricks and characters than I can really ever recall. I remember Professor Von Shutter Trap to Dr. DK to Sam and Chico to a thousand other puppets and clowns and different characters. I mean, Roy Stone could just do anything he set his mind to. Of course, I was around to see his brilliance since during all the summer VBSs, I ran the recreational time with the kids. Sometimes I'd also be a character in one of his many productions that usually preceded some huge dramatic finale. And of course, uh, he would also be a character in many of our silly video productions as well. Because, sir, you in the back of the room, I see uh, that you need an eyebrow trim. Pastor Andrew, I can't believe you would say such a thing. I thought we were friends. I thought we had a great relationship. Is that all you think about me and my ministry, that I'm some kind of clown? You stick me and the kids downstairs in the basement? I thought we had a better relationship than this. Uh, Pastor Roy, um, well, maybe we could talk about this later? No, we'll deal with it now. He's got to shoot! Yeah. <laughs> What in the world is this? This is my greatest invention. It is a time machine. You put a time machine in an 89 Toyota van. Absolutely, Johnny. It, it turns out that the Toyota van is the right size and shape to go through the time vortex. How does it even work? Oh, it's got a time dilation core. You know what? Never mind. I'm already bored. I'm already bored. Can I borrow it? No, you cannot borrow it. It's not even been tested. No, where are the keys, though? Well, the keys are in it, but you can't borrow it, Johnny. I gotta borrow it's this. Not even I'm sorry, Professor. Yet. I'll bring Johnny, it back. Johnny, you can't use it. I'll bring it back. Johnny, it's not been tested. You will not even make it back in time. Oh,
tea? Love some. <laughs> it was you! Yes, it was me all along! The dummy! You're down here every week with those kids, and you leave me stuck in that suitcase! I've had enough! But why did you do it? I knew if we could get the staff out of the way, we could take over this church and run it the way we want to. I'll never join you, dummy. Now's our chance. As a former circus guy, Roy was our resident tent specialist. And we had this 40 by 60 foot tent during the days of construction and for many summer events in the years that followed. We even used it during COVID. So when rain or wind storms would blow through, Roy would always be the first guy out there cinching everything back down. He was always one of the hardest workers that I've ever met. And he's not the kind of worker that just gets his part of the job done and then leaves. He jumps in and tries to do anything that needs to be done, and he always has. And I mean anything at all. So under that tent, I remember one of his ambitious summer events for kids ended with a huge Renaissance style feast, like a fair. It was complete with all these big turkey legs and, and all the trimmings. And Andrew and I uh, were recruited to star in his production. And so we were sporting tights and some of the worst British accents imaginable. And those turkey legs sat in the construction dumpster for a few weeks after the event. Needless to say, it was one of the best memories and also one of the worst smells I've ever had at the church at Pleasant Grove. Roy also had this dream of an old school ice cream truck that he could uh, use for outreach and for just giving out ice cream to kids in the community and their families. His dream eventually came true, but not after just years of designing and working and fundraising. Uh, he also worked with me as we tried to customize our old 1985 school bus into something we could take across the country. Uh, I love that old bus, even though most of our customizations never really worked out like they should. Roy was also the graphic designer for the church for years and years. Like together, we collaborated and designed more t-shirts than I can ever remember, uh, probably 50 or 60 of them. Uh, and we always wanted every event to be special and have its own motif. And so Roy was really patient with me as I would come back and forth with 75 different revisions of the design. And he always just did it with a smile or with me, uh, a smile followed by a snarky, sarcastic comment, which for us has always been like its own separate love language. Roy and I also uh, worked on several children's books together. He illustrated my first children's book called A Little Fish Named Nelly that we gave to our very first graduating class that had come through from seventh grade all the way through their senior year of our youth ministry. And Roy's fingerprints were all over everything we did, and he always had my back. Now, Roy hates athletics, uh, or he likes to call it sport ball. He just doesn't really care for sports, but he has always been the best sport himself. And above that, Roy Stone has been a faithful friend. Happy retirement, Pastor Roy. I just wanted to say thank you for all you did for me in my life. Um, I never got the opportunity to sit underneath you as my children's pastor in children's church, but what I did have the opportunity of was when I became a believer at age 14, you saw my passion for kiddos, you saw my passion for the Lord and wanting to serve, and you took a chance on a young teenager and put me in a place of leadership within your ministry and stewarding those kids' lives. 
And I will just never forget that. Thank you for taking a chance on me. Thank you for inviting me to the Cayman Islands when we got to serve down there. Um, and I just really appreciate my time and you pouring into me, raising me up, teaching me how to serve, teaching me how to steward young people's lives. Um, and that's something that I still get to do today. Um, and I'm just so thankful you poured into me in that way. You taught me how to be a leader. And uh, that's just my favorite memory with you. So thank you so much. And I really hope you enjoy retirement. Sunday mornings are some of my favorite times. I usually get to church fairly early, long before anyone is here. Going over whatever I need to do for the day. Most of the time, this creative is trying to come up with something that you know might make my conversation or my message a little better for the day and i can set my clock by something that happens every sunday for the past 20 years and that is about three or four hours before church starts when i'm in the middle of kind of going over everything roy walks up the stairs and into my office and he just simply looks at me and he says well what can i do for you boss do you need anything what are you talking about He'd sit down, and most of the time, 90% of the time, we'll come up with either something I hadn't thought about as I share with him what I'm talking about, or I've got some idea that I got just in the last two hours, and Roy's always there to make it come to pass. Whether it's helping me learn a magic trick with a change bag that I can do that Sunday morning, or maybe it's a, a graphic that he makes that helps me illustrate uh, a, a point or I remember one, one event we did, I think it was a State of the Church address, I wanted to do this whole puzzle thing and I had this idea and then the next thing you know it turned into a massive c concept and he, he did all of that for me, all because we just had conversations about it. Most of the illustrations that you see on Sunday mornings, he's had a hand in, whether it's going to Walmart to buy the lollipops or the Tootsie Rolls because I came up with that two hours ago. Roy always made it happen. He was always there for me. He was another serving me. He was somebody who wanted to be a part of what was happening in other people's lives, and he would do it every week, and I would set my clock by it. I just got to tell you, those conversations are some of the most memorable moments I have with Roy because they happen every Sunday. Roy's servitude to those who come across his path is, has always been what bound us together. It's always been what brought us the kindred spirit because we just wanted to serve others with the gifts and the creativity that we have. But Roy and I share a kindred spirit in a way that many people don't share. And that is, I think what knits us together is that neither one of us can spell or read very well. And so, you know, I don't know where that goes or how that connects us, but we're connected by that. And I love that. Another thing that connects us is that my boys, my three boys, who are now all over the age of 20, all three of them only have known one children's pastor their whole life, and that's Roy Stone, every one of them. So if for some reason, somewhere down the road, or you've encountered my kids and they've given you issues or they're not the best or whatever, hey, I'm not the only one to blame. I think Roy had something to do with it as well. Roy, it's dark in here. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, some of y'all will get that, some of you won't. But uh, happy retirement, and it's really cool that you are all three of our children's pastors. I think that's something not many kids get to say. And uh, my favorite memory was VBS is growing up, and the work that you put into them and the creativity, I think really showed what kind of person you are and how loving you are towards children and so thank you for that and for all those growing up and happy retirement my favorite pastor roy memory is i have a lot some things that come to mind are the hanging donut uh on the carabiner and you can have to eat the donut not use your hands love chalk drawings and um i loved getting to work with roy uh, as an intern growing up when i was in youth i uh, spent a lot of time uh, pouring into kids and learned how to pour into kids from you, from from Roy. And so that was really awesome. Um, but I'd say my top memory is when we played, I don't know, it was like a three-legged race kind of, but I pretty much got duct tape into a sleeping bag and had to stand and then jump. And the first time I jumped, I just smashed my face on the floor. So that was probably my favorite memory. Hey, Pastor Roy. Um... It's Seth, as you can tell. Just wanted to wish you a congratulatory, happy retirement. Um, 
and blessings on all your future endeavors. Uh, I was asked to share a favorite memory I have with you or of you. Um, and the best one I can remember is when I woke up one morning to Roy and Carrie being at our old house in Crossville, Tennessee and walk in and on the dining room table were brand new hermit crab kits. And I'd never had a hermit crab, so that was exciting. And we kept those things for years and they stunk and took up a bunch of space and kept us up all night and scared us and all the good things that uh, parents love. So that's my favorite memory. I've lived in ministry long enough to know that people like Roy are very rare. Most people do the minimum or less of what's required, but Roy isn't like that. He always shows up and he offers his whole self. And this comes from a deep love that Roy has for God and for God's people. Uh, Roy has always loved our kids really well because he has always been keenly aware of how well that he has been loved by Jesus. After running away from the carnival and living behind a dumpster, he's always valued the life that God has given him. And I've always appreciated that Roy is very present, like he's present and grateful for what he has in the moment. He always uh, wanted to write a book, his autobiography, and maybe that'll still happen someday. Uh, and he wanted to call it, I ran away from the circus to join a home. Well, buddy, I hope you know that we're so proud to be that home for you. And I'm so proud to call you my coworker, but even more, to call you one of my few lifelong friends. Will there ever be another Roy Stone? Not necessarily, but that's okay, because you have impacted our lives in truly unique ways that only eternity will tell. Man, I wish you truly the best of luck in all that is to come. And we're just so excited to keep experiencing it all together with you. We love you and Carrie dearly. At the end of the day, I just want everyone to know that Roy has made a mark. Roy's made a mark on children that he's taught, not only in the United States, but even in overseas with illustrations and illusions. An attempt to let them see the mark of Christ in his life and leave a mark on them that somewhere along the way they'll understand and come to, to a relationship with Christ. That's been what we've been all about together all these years. And we may not have done it right along the way, and we may have messed up, and we may have made some mistakes, but the heart and the intention of everything that we've always done together has been to leave that mark. So it leads me to the last thought, which is the mark that is on the church of Pleasant Grove. Sunday morning in church when we had gathered together at the end of a June jam to do kind of the closing service. And he always had these crazy things he would come up with. And I said to him, I said, hey, you know the one with the test tube that you explode? I said, that's the one I want to do. And he said, yeah, we can do that. And so we got ready to do it on Sunday morning. And I said, I think you should put more powder into it. We did the experiment and sure enough, man, it went off without a hitch. It was perfect. It billowed and it just exploded. And it exploded so much, it went all the way up to the ceiling. And through the whole entire service, it would drip down. And, and, and like I had to go on and preach and it would drip. It was just, it was just this amazing, beautiful day. I loved it. And um, man, when we got finished with that and that stuff finally dried, there was this mark on the ceiling. For years, we never painted it. We just left it there. It was a mark that I'll never forget. We painted it over it recently in black, but here's what I know. Even though I don't see it, I'll always remember the mark you left on my life and the children that were in your care. So with that friend, I love you. I'll miss our morning chats on Sunday, but forever glad for our friendship that will last forever. Godspeed, my friend. Back me up, Pudra.